Greetings all This is Torian Torian pretty much Also known as Super T Sigma Just want to talk to you for a minute or two On um, This phrase that I thought about Where In scriptures God is Referring to himself As the Alpha and the Omega Really more so In red letter print uh, Jesus says these words In the end of the uh, book of Revelation He says I am the bright and morning star So you have the bright and morning star They were usually viewed as two of the same thing Like it's a morning star that's also bright But when you look into other cosmologies You'll know that You'll notice that the depictions of Lucifer was known as the day star or what you would call the morning star. So there's a distinguishing between the morning star and the bright. So Jesus paints this, this dichotomy of, of opposing levels on the spectrum where you have the anti-hero in the morning star archetype but you also have the bright or the bright star or the bright side so with that you'll see a struggle in human existence between what is the bright star and what is the morning star now the morning star is not necessarily a uh, herald to the morning per se or a uh, proceeding into brighter times but it can be looked at like it's a precursor or a distinction marker of the last vestige or the last stand for darkness because other slogans will say that the uh, the darkest hour is just before dawn. So when you put that kind of a phrase and you apply it to the morning star, what you'll get is the last traces of the dark side, not necessarily a highlighting of the bright side, which is why the bright is also added as a uh, as a subject or as a uh, as a thing, so it's not just the morning star, but it's the bright and the morning star. So that tackles that, and this is up for debate and speculation. What I'm finding a lot now is a lot of my videos that I may have posted maybe a year or two ago, or maybe even three years ago. A lot of these videos where I'm doing the face to face thing, uh, I'm getting a lot of. Um, you know responses positive responses but i'm also getting uh maybe some possible detractors maybe even some trolls too so in uh just like then is like now i'm answering everything i'm responding to everybody i'm responding to everybody so you know whatever you want to discuss you know in context you know i'm gonna engage anyone who engages on here May not be in the same style, may not be in the same uh, fashion when you factor in matters like time and change and growth. You can kind of uh, maybe see a difference in temper, difference in temperament, I should say, when it comes to the responding uh, of different comments as time goes on. So with that being said, let's jump at, back into this and deal with the alpha and omega portion of this where... It's said where he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, on, on first touch, you look at this phrase, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, right? As simply that and only that, the beginning and the ending. So the one who starts it, the one who stops it, the author and the finisher, the, uh, the one who begins something and the one who completes it, uh, the reason and the grand conclusion. So you have that thing, you have beginning and end, start and finish, uh, from A to Z type of um, energy on that. But when you 
take it into the context of how the red pill community would define an alpha you look at this like a leader of the pack and an omega would essentially be an outcast an outlier or the bottom of the pack now when you're considering what red pill philosophy does to terms like alpha and omega not only does it not diminish or detract from its original meaning but it actually provides an even deeper context an even more accurate uh socio-political edge to this to these terms alpha and omega because on the alpha side you would have um, according to the abrahamic faiths you would have god and his interweaving of jesus as being a manifestation of the father if you take it into the maybe judeo-christian part of the abrahamic belief system you will get a father son interplay and interchange so alpha would be the creator the creator is what the leader of the pack the leader of the tribes the leader of the disciples so it still points to the son at the same time as him being a uh, an outstanding marker or a marker that stands out with that you have to consider what is the omega the one who was cast out so this ties into the stone that the builders rejected has now become the capstone the head of the corner so to be an outcast is the omega, but you can also be the leader. So how do we make this real? Have you ever found yourself being praised by the same people who maybe now curse you, right? At one point you were looked at as the leader, you were looked at as, as the head, you were looked at as the, uh, as the top authority. You were viewed with the highest respect. And maybe times, opinions, and people changing have led them to think in the reverse that now you're the outcast, now you're the no good, now you are the no longer relevant, now you are the omega, the end, now you are the one to be skipped over, now you're looked at as the one who's on the bottom, the one who is not the leader of the pack, maybe not even a part of the pack anymore to be cast out. So the, this rings true um, when you look at it through a red pill uh, philosophy. And again, that was more so um, eventually ended up uh, venturing into the dating and relationships sphere of, uh, of communication. But essentially its origins, we're talking of the red pill philosophy, its origins were primarily based on different aspects of manhood and different uh different ways of a man's life his different uh social circles or his social pedigree being either a top dog or a bottom feeder but bottom was really looked at as beta more so and then they get into other terms also but just sticking to the alpha and omega uh concept if you find yourself in the uh, in the shoes of one who was praised and then cursed by the very same people who praised you. You may very well be the alpha and omega of that situation, the beginning and the end of that situation, the leader and the outcast of that situation or that group. This is a God quality to understand that you have importance even when people love you, of course, but also when people hate you, you have equal importance because as they say a lot of times, hate is really misplaced love or a love denied. If a person loves you enough and they don't want to, and they don't want to even make you maybe the object of their love, they will actually hate you. And depending on the degree of intensity of that hate, can actually be pointing to the degree of intensity of love for that particular person. So you may find the ob you might find your haters being really obsessed with you and those who 
are uh, antithetical to who you are as a person and who vow to play the antagonist in your story, they may actually be your greatest supporters, your biggest fans, but they're in denial. They're in the shadow of that reality. They're in the cliffotic part of that reality where they're not ready to face it. They're still dealing with the husk, but they don't want to deal with the wheat that the husk was trimmed from because if they deal with the vegetable, right, that tends to nutrition, right, if they deal with the nurturing aspect of what that means, it simply means that they want to be a part of your team. It means that they want to be of support. Deep down inside, they want to be on your side. But because they hate, they feel like status wise, they should hate you. They feel like maybe even situational wise and uh, based on your personal history with the person and or people, they would feel more inclined and more maybe even justified in their hatred towards you. But it's really a misplaced love. If someone were truly your enemy, you may not even go as far as hating them, but just knowing to stay clear of them. Super T Sigma, also known as Torian, pretty much, saying peace, blessings, and continue to keep on keeping on.